Welcome to Your 7 Cents, a show for mission-driven entrepreneurs to evolve into unstoppable, intuitive leaders. Listen to Terry and her guests as they share stories of being powered by angels and intuition to achieve their success. Now, let's unlock the power in you with your host, Terry Wildeman. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Your 7 Cents, Business Powered by Angels and Intuition. I'm your host, Terry Wildeman, and I'm a speaker, trainer, and a coach, and thrilled to be here today to share with you dynamic insights on how we can incorporate intuition and energy metaphysics in the workplace in a way that it is congruent with the practical and tactical side of ourselves. We often tend to separate them when indeed, when we integrate it all together, we become powerhouses of productivity and we are congruent with mind, body, and spirit. So in order to really do a good job, a good job in the leadership role, it's really important to understand that it's necessary to integrate both sides so that you can operate from a highly congruent platform to influence your people, to influence your coworkers, to influence your employees, and to live a life of grace, ease, and flow. Today, I'm really excited to introduce someone who is a good friend of mine who I haven't talked with in a long time, long, long time, and intuition. Actually, the angels brought us back together in a very strange way. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, but I would like to introduce you to Nalini McNabb, and Nalini is a rock star when it comes to intuition. <laughs> integrating the divine feminine and everything that we do. So Nalini, since I don't have your bio in front of me, can you please share with the audience all about your background and then we'll get into some discussion on how you came to be where you are today. Sure. Hi, Terry. It is really great to reconnect. I'm really happy to be here. So I'm Nalini McNabb. Nalini is my author and my teacher name. My given name is Mary. So that's something Terry and I have in common. And um, I started out in this life, I came in aware. So it wasn't really a matter for me, like for many of you, of learning to use my intuition. It was why the hell doesn't everybody? So that, that as a child was one of my biggest challenges. And I took that into the business world. Um, I majored in music. I studied in the Midwest and in the East Coast and at Oxford in England. And I had a degree in musicology. I got this close to defending my master's thesis in harmonic theory. And I went, why? And the truth of that was that my intuition, my angels came in and said, you don't need that. And even though I was 22, as the musical goes, um, I listened and I said, okay, you're right. What do I need with more letters after my name, I guess? Of course, you know, various agencies and my parents were not pleased, but I followed that. So then from there, it progressed into doing work still in the music world and then moving into computers. And I started working in information technology in 1984, and I spent 20 years moving from writing banking software, so I know exactly how it all works, and then designing databases and building them, and then doing project management, and then finally, my very, very last job was as a VP, a corporate vice president of an advertising startup, so I worked in IT for a long time. During that time, I worked in martial arts. I was a third degree black belt in Shotokan karate. I worked hard. I trained hard. You know, I took on all my frustrations on the dojo floor, which really helps <laughs> when you work in corporate. And all that oh time, <laughs> all that t was a place to put it. And all of that time, um, I was actually making probably 90% of my decisions based on intuition, angelic guidance, and the support of the divine feminine. Now, did I talk about that in the workplace? No. No, not and, that. And I was taught that as a child. You know, mother would say to me, because she actually had a spiritual teacher, she would say, now, we don't talk about that out in the world. And I would look at her and I would think, they're all crazy, every one of them. But I'm listening, and I don't want to get her in trouble, and I don't want to get me in trouble. And then we all learn how unfortunately true that really is. 
Yeah. So, yeah. And do you find that it's changing a bit today? I do. And I find that it started changing. Um, gosh, in the late 90s, it actually started changing. I was working at a startup then, a couple of them, a series of them. And I was able to hire project teams who we could say reflected my internal values. Um, but I was given a little bit more freedom than one usually has in corporation. And so I hired people who pulled tarot cards in the morning and put them on their desk because they knew that was the energy that they needed to use in their programming for that day. And they didn't care what anybody wow. thought. And of course I was their manager. So that was mine to deal with. <laughs> but um, I used to just tell people, I don't care what they have on their desks as long as it inspires them and they meet their deadlines and everything works well, let them be who they are. And so nice. I had a, I had a unique team of people that way. You know, so it started to change then. Now, I think, I don't think that there's, uh, you know, a young person, especially who's working in any kind of information technology who does not acknowledge the ghost in the machine at the very least and know that there is another force, you know, working beneath this. Yeah. I mean, they grew up on Star Wars the way that we grew up on Captain Kangaroo. So, you know, it's a completely yeah. different thing. That's really yeah. true. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because I look at Star Wars and I look at Luke Skywalker and I look at Yoda. And when you look at the energy and the lessons that are in those movies. And the other one um, that I think a lot of our younger kids relate to and the adults is Harry Potter. Yes. You know, the lesson over and over again of, of really being true to yourself. Yes. And the fear that you're different. Yes. Uh, I, and I don't know about you. I, I, and you and I have talked about this in the past because it's mm -hmm. been, what, five years since we connected. And, I think so. And we were brought together. And this is what I wanted to sh share. Mary was on my mind uh, two weeks ago. Uh, she was on my mind and on my mind. And I had to find her. And <laughs> I'm searching the internet. And, I, you know, I'm looking at her website. There's no way to call you. There was no email on the website. Uh, I'm looking all over <laughs> Facebook. Facebook. I'm looking all over social media and I'm like, where the heck is this woman? And I heard the words, look up email. And I'm looking in my email because I, I have a different email than what I used to use. So I'm looking at everything, turning it inside out and upside down. And sure enough, didn't I find emails from us back to 2013 that mm -hmm. um, when 2013, 2014 was when we lost touch, touch mm -hmm. with each other. And on a fluke, I'm like, I'm going to send this to her. I don't know if it's going to reach her. I'm going to send it. And darn, if you didn't respond, I almost fell off my chair. And you had been only in the country, what, how many hours? Uh, 20 hours, something like that. I had only been yeah. back in country. Yeah. Yeah. You were back. And that's how intense that was, that we needed to get together. Well, I believe it's because you were supposed to be here on and I so. was sitting in the in my study in France, and your face mm -hmm. kept popping in. And I mean, it's not oh. that I don't recognize my wow. friend Terry. So I kept thinking, Terry, why am I thinking about Terry? Why am I thinking about Terry? And just because I was getting ready to leave the country, so I had gotten rid of my SIM card, turned off the accounts, you know, I was thinking, all right, well, when right. I get back to the States, so sure enough, you know, there, it, there is. it was there were your email popped in and I just laughed. Yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, and this is what I want to talk about with when I want to focus on would like to focus on where intuition is concerned. It's these intuitive hits that are so critical to listen to. Yeah. Why would I be, you know, why in tarnation did you suddenly start popping into my head? Why mm -hmm. did I suddenly start popping into your head and you're in the other mm -hmm. side of the world? Yes. Uh, well, you're in France. Okay, so you're six hours away. <laughs> you're just an ocean away. But it was, when all of that happened, that's, that's what I wanted to bring out here, that these things aren't unique. These mm. things happen morning, noon, and night, 24 hours a day, and we look at them as being so different, so weird. You know, mm. these are the little miracles 
that happen constantly. And when we trust our intuition and follow what comes to us, that's how magic happens. Nalini's here. Mary's here. I can't believe Mary's here. <laughs> you know, and it's really exciting to be able to have this conversation with you. So what I, I'd love to know, Mary, what was it that finally uh, literally ejected you out, out <laughs> of the corporate world? Because I know there's a whole story there that um, I have to refresh my memory on that. But sure. I know there's a story why you ejected out of there. And a lot of it had to do with following your heart, following your gut, following it, your intuition and what you were doing. It so did. And it actually had to do with our friends, the Marys, you know, and, and the angels. It literally felt like being grabbed by the scruff of the neck and shaken with that's enough of that. Mm. And that had started to happen. I was actually experiencing what they call a classic dark night of the soul. And it's not, it's really difficult to describe. There are classic works on it. St. John of the Cross wrote one. Andrew Harvey talks about it. But it's, you could call it a deep depression, but it really isn't that. It's not depression. It's you are being marched through everything you have ever judged as unlovable. I mean, ever. Not just this life, but like mm. ever. And it's, mm. it's being immersed in those energies. And I was going to my day job and probably doing a wonderful job at it. And um, I was managing people and doing this. And at the same time, this was just getting worse and worse. And I felt like my evil twin was going to work, even though I'm not sure that's exactly true. But so can you describe what was happening uh, emotionally and mentally and physically? Because I know that there are people listening to this mm -hmm. who are experiencing what you went through. Sure. Um, classic Dark Knight, I can highly recommend, you know, the treatise on it by St. John and then some of the other work on it. I describe it in my book as well. But what it is, is um, I was in a, I'm a seer. I, I'm an open perceiver. I'm, I'm clear everything. Mm -hmm. And so it, for me to not be able to see was as though I had been in some kind of traumatic accident and lost all of my senses. I was walking around in charcoal gray, which actually is one of my favorite colors, but I was walking around in that gray soup mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. at this, the same time that I'm going through the motions of life. And the weight of it just got heavier and heavier. And psychologists will tell you, oh, that's depression. This is different because this was spiritual weight. This was as though the angels, the divine were saying, okay, you will look at this. You will see these things. And so I would meditate in the morning. I never stopped my meditative practices. I started meditating when I was about five or six and, you know, spent years, you know, studying and doing that. So I'd get up and I would meditate in the morning and it would make it worse instead of making it better. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. And I, but I know I had to, I, I had to sit there and open up to the divine and it's not so much, it's not as martyrish as it sounds. It's not so much self-torture. You just knew the only way out is through. It's a cliche. We've all heard it, but it's really true. And I just knew that. I was compelled. So I would go through these meditations and I would see these, you know, not visions so much. I, I do have visions, but it was visions of certain things, like things that have happened in my life, memories, the little vignette montage that you have when sources explaining sure. something to you sure. that says this, 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 and this, those are all the ways you did that or that that happened. And we go, Oh, anyway, um, I was having all of those from this life, from other lives. And a lot of it were, these were things that I, I would have told you I had come to peace with. And so it wasn't as though I was going through all this huge angst about it. It was just those states of being were rippling through me. Mm -hmm. And I remember right at the crux of the ejection seat from the corporate world, um, I got up one morning and, you know, took the dogs for a walk, fed the dogs, fed the husband, did the whole, you know, got everything ready, went to go out the front door. And I was an engineer casual and it was a San Francisco yummy summer day. So it was cold. And I had my rain boots on. And I remember pulling my left boot on and thinking, I get suicide now because I've never understood it ever. And I thought, I get it because those people would rather be dead than feel what they're feeling. And I thought, 
you know what? That's, That's how I feel right now. And I thought, That's but I, true. what I know about consciousness is that that won't help because you'll still be in the same consciousness just without a body. You know? <laughs> so it was huge. Wow. It took me to this really amazing place. And it, I know that that was a turnaround. I went into work that morning and I had to take a, a small medical leave for a few days I came back in after the medical leave, just like on a Tuesday and, you know, from the Thursday and I'd been sacked and it was like, no, we're, you know, we're letting you go. Well, they had been systematically downsizing. It wasn't a huge surprise, but the way it was done was mm -hmm. eh, typically corporate brutal. And it was like, that's it clean out your desk, be gone by two, you know, oh, and by the way, we're, we're inviting in that consulting company for IT that you used to work with. We're inviting them in to take this project over this afternoon, you know, classic. And so I said, oh, well, oh, you know, geez. say hi to the guys for me because they're going to tell you exactly what I've been telling you. But, you know, and did. But I walked out, um, had to put things in a box and put them in the boot of a friend's car, just some other things. Cause I was co completely unprepared. I had taken the train in. I can tell you living, you've been living in Europe. The boot of the friend's car is the trunk of the car. <laughs> Americans speak American, not English. What can I, say? <laughs> I, I, I mean, Oh, by the okay. way, being sacked, if you haven't figured it out yet, means being fired. Fired. Okay. <laughs> I will endeavor to put my American chip in. Um, <laughs> I, I just have to say that. So. <laughs> um, but anyway, that just, you know, that, that was the crux of it is I remember just sort of sorting everything and getting out of the office and getting back on the, an earlier train. And I wasn't used to that part of the train schedule, you know, and getting myself home and walking into my living room and the dogs are like, oh, you're home early and it's not a weekend. And I'm like, yeah. And I just got pushed in. I just got pushed off the cliff. I just got pushed down the chute and I know it. And I watched this thing close over me. This is, you know, psychic vision. And I went, okay, I've been told the only way out is through. Let's do this. And so I spent probably the better part of the next week meditating as much as I could, which might sound like self-flagellation. And I don't know, maybe it was, but I knew that with each one, somehow there was something that lightened up and I still couldn't see. I couldn't have told you what it was. And so at that point I reached out for help, you know, to the people that I know that do readings, people like, you know, like that, just say, just, give me a little bit of clarity here. And I had done this about two months before and every single one of them canceled all within 24 hours. This, that was source saying, no, you don't get oh, that wow. yet. You know? Yeah. Not yet. You're not, not ready yet. yet. And so at this point I, I actually got a phone. I had a dream that I got a phone call from this woman saying she had an opening in her schedule. And then I got up that morning and the phone rang and it was her secretary saying she had an opening so I sat down to speak with her and we've known each other for a long time. And she said, so how are you? And I burst into tears. Oh. And what I don't think even you know this about me is I stopped crying when I was four years old. And while I was going through all of my awakening, teaching the mystery school process, the 13 years with the teacher, I would try to open that back up. You know, we'd go watch tear jerkers, do these other things like, oh, come on, the emotional body needs to release. Let's do this. Well, I think it all happened that morning. Just the, the dam broke and I just started crying. And so she the said, yeah, she mm -hmm. said, oh, OK, well, let's just jump right in then, you know, because you're clearly not able to speak yet. And she said, oh, this is coming in so very clearly. And one of the guides that she and I share is the goddess Lakshmi. And she said, Lakshmi is coming in and saying, I mean, it's the divine mother in another form. And she's coming in and she's saying, this is your dark night. You know what that means. You've gone through this before. You know the terminology from your study. This is what this is. You're not going crazy. You're not losing your mind. This is, this is what this is. And she described the process that I was building a staircase that went down through my judgments, through everything I had judged as unlovable and into my own self-created versions of hell. 
and that there would be a point, and I wasn't there yet, but there would be a point where there wouldn't be any more. And I would know. And this was so clear. And it was just, it rang all of the certainty bells. And I said, okay, now that's something I can hold on to. It's not yet, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. And it did. You know, I can't remember how much longer it was. It was an instant, but all of a sudden there was a day because I would sit and I would meditate and I would say, okay, I think I've assimilated this level for all the good thinking does you in that state. And I would say, all right, you know, I'm, I feel that I'm ready to go down one more. Then there's one day there wasn't a step down. Always before it was okay, let's take you down to this level. And there wasn't any. And I felt like I was in limbo, like somebody had strapped a harness on me and thrown me off a cliff and I was just hanging there. Like, well, all right, wow. what? no direction, nothing. And again, for a seer, that's terrifying. And so I was learning to mm -hmm. not let it terrify me. It's like, okay, my perceptual array is gone. So I must trust how I'm guided because it's the only way I can move in any direction. And I was, yes, <laughs> that's the one. I was sitting there and feeling that and just not the trust yet. Just like, okay, I'm ready. And here was the divine mother in all her, just this burst of light right in front of me. And it was blinding because I was so used to this gray at this point. And she said, turn around. Mm -hmm. And at this point I was directionless. I was, I was in meditation. If I'd opened my eyes, I was sitting in my room, you know, but mm -hmm. I had no idea. Those words made no sense. And I said, what? She said, turn around. And I felt the intention and the intention moved me, you know, 180 degrees. And I looked and I saw that staircase that had been described to me and like a grand staircase, you know, the Scarlet O'Hara type. And, you know, because we all build our own. And along the sides of it were all these characters now, some humans, some inhuman, some looked like ghosts, some looked like monsters, some looked like children. And these were all aspects of myself, you know, my inner mm -hmm. aspects that somehow had been part of this judgment journey. Like they had been judged or cast aside or, or whatever. And there were shades of them, literally like the, the ghosts in, in anime, you know. And without mm -hmm. any instruction, it, it was the light went to the top of the stairs and there was just this beckoning hand come up. And it didn't happen all at once. It took a several, a couple of weeks, I think, of meditations, but at each step or three or five, you know, in any given day that I went back up, these aspects would come off the sides of the stair. It was just my metaphor and into my heart. And if I couldn't let them into my heart, I didn't move. And then it was, I remember this one, it was a little boy It was on the left side, this little, little tiny boy. And he had this cold little clammy hand and he put his little cold clammy hand in mine. And we walked up three of those stairs together before he finally melted wow. into the heart. And that was the, the only word he said. Most of them didn't speak. It was all past words, past that kind of mind stuff. But he just went, finally. And then when I was at the top, there was all, there was the light, there was the divine mother. And she's like, okay, it's finished. And of course me, the practical person who works in the world, I right, said, what's finished? <laughs> you know? And she said, wait, and you'll see. And it was literal. I opened my eyes from that med meditation and everything was back. And oh, I, wow tried that next week i had something like seven yeah seven different interviews this is in my book and every single one went really really well and then something happened i mean something just to the point where one of the managers died i mean it's wow. funny now but you know i'm seeing that this poor person is calling me and saying because they're obviously friends well you know we i'm sorry but we offered you this job but we really can't send you the paperwork because this person died and i'm thinking they died I'm like okay i you are pushing the sense of humor here you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. So clearly I'm yeah. not supposed to go back into IT anymore. And that was it. That was the big pivot. So I went up onto my and how were you feeling at the time? How was your body feeling? Oh. When you could open your eyes and see. Oh. Well, what was your body feeling? What were, what did you know? What did you hear? What did you see? It what was did you feel? Buzzing. It was effervescent. I mean, I've felt this before, but this was just 
you know, like being inside champagne bubbles or something like that. It was just, and so light and so free, just this freedom. Because um, what the Toltec tradition calls this is dropping your personal history. That's what happened. And you so that again, that, because the video stopped. Dropping sure, your personal what? The Toltec tradition calls this dropping your personal history. And I didn't know that till afterwards, till I sort of looked into it, what had happened. But yeah, I was just absolutely sitting in light. So yeah, then I went and did what I thought I knew how to do, which was go get some interviews, go back to work, you know, but mm -hmm. spirit was having, source was having none of it. Intuition was no. And I, I kept thinking, okay, what do I do? What do I do? And gradually, you know, there's a lot more of that story, but gradually over time, um, by t following exactly what my intuition said to do and who to contact and where to show up. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden I had a website and I had clients and the work that I was meant to do had shown up and it wasn't like an A to Z, an A to Z kind of a thing. It was this step and this step and this step and this step and this step. And then it formed around me. And I, and I find that that's how things happen. Yeah. 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 Nothing happens in a direct line. <laughs> okay. Nothing no. happens. And, and that model has shown itself in the last 48 hours. I've, I've seen or heard that. Now this is the third time. Yeah. So yeah. Well, three times. Just don't go straight yeah. Up. Yeah, so, so there you go. So one of the things you talked about, Mary, when you started sharing your story with us was how connected we are to the Marys. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Because I've never really talked about that on the show. My connection really? with Mary. So I would love. Wow. Yeah, really. I, you? I talk okay. about intuition. I don't know. I talk about yeah. intuition. Maybe that's time. I talk about intuition. I talk about the angels uh, because the angels, as you know, pushed me into this, uh, doing this show in a huge mm -hmm. way. And, you mm -hmm. know, their hands were plastered um, back here. Between your shoulder blades. Shoulder. I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, and it was painful. The more resisted the more pain I was in mm -hmm. because you're pushing back. And it's like, I don't want any parts of this. I did a radio mm -hmm. show for two years. I know what's involved. I know the work. Yeah, me too. Um, and, and I was praying to the Marys, but I would still love to have you share with the audience about our Marys. <laughs> sure. Well, what we're talking about, I mean, the, the name Mary actually um, has as one of its meaning and there are many, many derivatives of it. You know, there's Mary, Maria, Maria, Mariam. There's, a, you know, every language has it. And I, I really truly believe that 50% of the women in the world are named Mary as one of their names. And then there's a reason for that. And it's because of this vibration. The name Mary in its original actually means a leader. It's actually a title rather than a name. And it means that we carry, there's, there's a leadership vibe, not like, I'm a leader, you're a leader, but that this energy, this archetypal energy leads us mm -hmm. through our authenticity into our sovereignty, which doesn't mean we rule over anything but our own egos. And it's that that's what this is. And that's what it does. And it, it sustains, mm -hmm. it nourishes. I mean, they call her the queen of heaven, you know, the mother of Jesus yeah. for a reason. If she's the mother of the light, light is the intelligent quotient, intelligence quotient of love. She's the field of love. Mm -hmm. She's one of its representatives. So it's, there's that Mother Mary, and then there's Magdalena, who was so, you know, vilified. And none of that was true. I mean, there are various, you know, everyone has their stories about it. Whatever they want to believe is fine. But none of that was true. It has to do with these women who were receptacles, vessels for the light, and mm -hmm. were able to walk that which is really where our intuition and our angels and our guides are all helping us to do. We all have that capability. So that connection to the Marys is the connection to that strand or that archetypal energy mm -hmm. where they hold and they nurture and they sustain and they guide and they nudge really hard when, you, <laughs> when, when you're not listening and you don't want to take their really good advice. <laughs> so. Should I get my picture? Sure. Get my picture out? Yeah. Oh. When we started talking, I said to Mary, I think of her all the time. This Mary, uh, Mary McNabb, Nalini, mm -hmm. because of this connection that we have uh, with Mother Mary. And also, you know, you, you all have heard me talk about the Enchanted Boardroom. And I talk about the Boardroom being 
made up of who it is, uh, non-physical advisors who come from mm-hmm. the other side. And Mother Mary and Mother Mag and Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Grandmother Anna, which is Jesus' grandmother, and Kuan Yin are all part of my enchanted boardroom. And this lovely lady sits on top of my desk and looks mm-hmm. down on me. And when mm-hmm. I get stuck, when I go a little Looney Tune, uh, this is who I go to for advice, Mother Mary. And, mm-hmm. and for all I know, this could be Mary Magdalene too. Who knows? Uh, but it, it's like, whichever Mary it is, it's got Mary energy in it all over. And I love this picture. And I don't know who painted it. Ten of them appeared in the vestibule of my um, uh, of the church uh, that I was going to. And this was about three or four years ago. And I walked in and I went, whoa, what are you doing with all those? Take one. Thank you. <laughs> and that was the one that called out to me. It was uh, just the most amazing gift. So it's been sitting on top of my desk and uh, guiding me, working with me intuition-wise. So thank you for sharing that beautiful story uh, with Mary and leadership and and knowing that the divine feminine is rising. The divine feminine is, it, it's always been there. It's just yes. becoming more in focus in our society. So mm-hmm. Mary, how tell us about a little bit about the work that you're doing right now and how people can get in touch with you. Sure. Well, I am. Um, I do one-on-one sessions with people, um, individual mentoring for helping to attune, like move energy and attune them to their authenticity, how source moves through them, their guidance. It's not about me. It's about the people I work with. And I also do entrepreneurial sessions, which will be of interest to you, for people who just know that this is what works. I mean, when I look at the world, there isn't a successful entrepreneur, I mean, really successful in the world who does not know what we're talking about, following intuition, following your gut, you know, everybody understands that. There's a way that you can live that. And I do. And so I share that with people and help them to sort of hone and fine tune and refine how they can do that for themselves and especially in how they express into the world. We're all here to lay the light. And so how we do that is what lights us up. You know, you can't lay the light into right. the world if you're unhappy about it. So it's, it's doing that. So that's, that's what I do. I also have a couple of programs, series. One is Living a New Destiny, which is just the group mentoring version of all of that. Another mm-hmm. one is the Starstream series because a lot of us know that we're from elsewhere and there's a way to navigate this world that's different. And so these are transmissions, downloads that, that help with that on a monthly basis. My website is chaliceofwisdom.com. At least for the moment, I'm, I'm redoing it right now, but it's chaliceofwisdom.com. So you can find me there. And um, the programs are shifting and changing. So. <laughs> Yeah. I love yeah. that name, Chalice of Wisdom. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's my aspect. That's what comes through me. I write a lot. I write on Medium and I have a blog on my website. And the tag there says, you know, I write about wisdom from a place of wonder. Mm-hmm. And can you share with us the name of your book and where can we find it? Sure. The, the book that I released last summer is called Walk a New Way and it's on Amazon. So you can find it there, my Nalini McNabb author page. And then I have, I have some other books that are starting to go up there as well. They're different. But the memoir that, that tells my story and how I was taken by force, sort of, but actually absolutely voluntarily by source to right. walk away from everything that I had known to be my life and to be true and to anything that I would have followed. Not that there was anything wrong with it, but that there was another way. And we all know that that's true, especially just with following intuition and following guidance and listening to our, our enchanted boardroom. So that's just my story. And what are your last words of wisdom for our audience? (laughs) Oh, move into your heart. Use that instead of your head. Everybody says that, but the biggest one is listen. Listen. Go into that still place and listen. And then the most important thing, 
next to listening is follow through. Do what they tell you to do. <laughs> Try it. Yes. And it won't be the instant silver bullet result that you think it will be. Most times, a lot of times, it will be something you don't want to do. And are you being tested? Maybe. Um, but it's really yeah, yeah. listen and follow through. And it, it changes everything. And it will always be the right answer. There's always a solution. We just usually can't see it. They can. That's right. You're right. Well, Nalini, Mary, <laughs> thank you so very much for being here today. And I'm just so grateful that you're back in the States. I'm grateful that with uh, our interaction, our energies meshed in such a way that within 24 hours we were together. It was, it was really cool. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing your story sure. uh, with our audience in the hopes of someone out there listening needs to hear this story because they're stuck behind a corporate desk, miserable, and they're not listening to their intuition. They're not listening to the heart. They're not listening to the voices that keep uh, yeah. nudging them different so thank you so very much oh, and to our audience uh, thank you so much for being here i am terry wildeman i'm your host and i look forward to sharing more great interviews with you on your seventh sense business powered by angels and intuition take care of yourselves and to your success see you next time <laughs>